For the next part of this lab, we're going to be looking at retrieving long documents. In our examples thus far, in the playlist linked below the like button, the documents retrieved have been simple and short HTML files. We're going to see what happens next when we download a long HTML file. We're going to do the following. So we have our web browser, Google Chrome here. We're going to start our Wireshark packet sniffer. We're going to continue without saving. This is from the last time. We're going to enter the following URL into our browser. It's right here. It's all of these amendments that we have for the United States Constitution. Now, um, once we do this, we're going to display a rather lengthy US Bill of Rights. Pretty lengthy. Now, we're going to stop the Wireshark packet share, just like that. And then once we stop that, we're going to enter HTTP, and then the HTTP message will be displayed. In the packet listening window, we should see HTTP get message followed by a multiple packet TCP response to our HTTP get request. The multi-packet response deserves a bit of explanation. So recall from section 2.2 that the HTTP response message consists of a status line followed by a header lines, followed by a blank line, followed by the entity body. In the case of our HTTP get, the entire body in the response is the entire requested HTML file. In our case here, the HTML file is rather long. And at 4,500 bytes, it's too large to fit in a single TCP packet. With each um, piece being constrained within a separate TCP segment, in recent versions of Wireshark, Wireshark indicates each TCP segment as a separate packet, and the fact that the single HTTP response was fragmented across multiple TCP packets is included by the TCP segment of a resembled PDU. So if we were to look in our response right here, we can scroll down and we can see that we have some lines right here and we have a lot of lines and we can go all the way down and it prints it out here but we're going to see what it means by it when it's broken up and we're going to have to answer the following question so if we go back into the lab retrieving log documents instead of having HTTP here I'm going to try to write TCP and we get all of these right here now we're only going to pay attention to the ones that we want. And it should be this one. If we open this up, it um, should be this one. This one, we can see that uh, the TCP segment data. And we can keep looking until we find in here what we want. So we can look at this, and we can see that we have the Congress shall make no law respection and Bob there's a lot of stuff right there I don't really like how it's written out uh, because I can't read it but it does make sense and this is our amendment one now we should have some other stuff up here and that will be probably right here have it on here and it starts with the the so everything that says TCP segment of a resembled PDU that's what we had here we had the mention of a TCP segment of a resembled PDU, and we have one, two, and three like this. So we need to answer the following questions, and we'll look in the lab. So for this one, I have included a lot of screenshots. We're asked how many HTTP GET request messages did our browser send? Which packet number in the trace contains the GET message for the Bill of Rights? So if we look at these, we can see that this is going to be our HTTP GET message for what we're dealing with here. It's going to be in 1720 when I wrote this out. Um, it I think it was in a different actual uh, packet number. Um, and this is shown in figure 3.1 that's in this uh, lab document that's in the notes in the like, below the like button. There are eight TCP packets containing the Bill of Rights. We can look through them. And with these eight TCP packets, um, we can look at the next question. Which packet number in our trace contains the status code and phrase associated with a response to the HTTP GET request. So when I wrote this out, it was packet 1085. It contained the status code and phrase associated with the response, and this is in figure 3.2. So we look at figure 3.2. It has these um, words right here. It looks like it would be this one. This would be the equivalent of it. So 1761 in our case, I think. I'm not 100% sure. We're asked, what is the status code and phrase in the response? So if we look at our status code, uh, we would have to go to our hypertext transfer protocol and it should say that we have a 200. It doesn't there, but if we were to go back to our HTTP, we could for sure see 
that um, if we scroll down here, we have a 200 OK. And then we have how many data containing TCP segments were needed to carry the single HTTP response and text of the Bill of Rights. So in the figure, I'll just go off the notes. In figure, it says 3.4, which is right here. Uh, we have these packets right here. Um, these three packets, one, two, and I guess there's a third one that should be circled that contained these Bill of Rights. So if we go back to TCP, the main one containing the, or the ones that contain the Bill of Rights would be this one, this one, and this one, the TCP segment of a resembled PDU. Next, we're going to be looking at HTML documents with embedded objects. But that's all for section three, which is retrieving long documents.